Well, joining me now from Geneva is Joel Millman. He is a spokesman for the International Organization for Migration. Mr. Millman, thank you so much for your time. I understand your organization is unable to confirm that 700 migrants have died in the last few days. What numbers can you confirm, though? Uh, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked it. We, we know 45 bodies were found yesterday from, or reported yesterday from, from our discovery on Friday. We had numbers of a little over 100 Friday morning. That included uh, five people found killed uh, in one incident on Wednesday and also the, sus the suspected missing 100 uh, from, a, from a, a separate incident that same day. Uh, we, thought of a, we thought there was a third incident that might have three, 30 missing. So we were thinking of a number between 100 and 200 at this moment that we feel is probably accurate. Uh, we know of these media reports that talk about 700, and uh, that could certainly be possible given the size of the boat that we we're told capsized and was being towed. But uh, right now, we just haven't spoken to enough of the survivors to really come up with what we think is a, is a, a fair range, a fair ex estimate of what we think the casualties could be. Understandable. Now, Mr. Milman, there have been some reports that a crackdown on smuggling has caused people smugglers to use cheaper materials and equipment to recuperate their losses. Do you see those reports as having any kind of merit? It's too complicated to know, really. I mean, what we, what we can say for sure is the data shows that the enormous flow of migrants and refugees that left Turkey for Greece throughout the last 12 months that, that came to an end uh, rather quickly, late March this year, uh, that has that has not picked up, and we have not seen that flow shifting to North Africa. What we do see are very large numbers crossing the Sahara. We we had a report out Friday about the uh, 60,000. I think it was actually 62,000 people uh, that IOM teams were able to monitor passing through Agadez, Niger, February, March, April this year. And that that 90-day period. And uh, the remarkably small amount of money that it cost migrants to make that journey to Agadez on their way to the Libyan coast, we heard reports of as little as 85 US dollars to make that trip. So we know that, that there's quite a lot of demand to come up through that route, through the Sahara, into Libya, up, up into the Mediterranean. And it was just a matter of the warmer weather and the calmer seas before these boats put out to sea. Now, what are the restrictions or what are the business issues that the smuggling groups have, this is really not something we have any real knowledge of. Um, you know, they're making large profits. We're certain of that. And it may be difficult to get adequate craft, but, but the using inadequate craft, unsafe craft, has never been a deterrent to this, which is why we've, we've called out for years for a safe and, and legal migration to avoid these kind of catastrophes. And just quickly, Mr. Milman, as we are running out of time, if we look at when these uh, refugees or migrants reach Italian shores and, and want to make it further onto Europe, people are coming for all sorts of different reasons. Some are fleeing conflict, some are fleeing because there's a lack of job opportunities or a sluggish economy where they're coming from. Do you think that there should be a differentiation between economic migrants and refugees? Well, you know, it's a question we hear a lot. We also remind people that it's very easy for someone who is an economic migrant to start his journey in one country and be, be a victim of trafficking or a uh, coercion victim or a, a victim of violence by the time he comes to the he or she comes to the end of the journey. Uh, just because those distinctions are blurred all through for thousands of people. It also begs the question of who decides who, who has a legitimate fear and who doesn't. Uh, we think that this is a demographic uh, marriage, let's say, between uh, job-lacking Africa and the Middle East and job and, and worker-hungry Europe. Uh, this, this dance is going to go on one way or the other, and we just don't think it should be people should risk their lives for this. This is what both economies are crying out for. Uh, society has taken us, or history has taken us to this moment. And we know that this passage is going to take place. So to try to parse who's deserving and who isn't uh, seems to me inadequate in, in light of the fact that so many thousands are being killed on these journeys. Joel Millman, thank you so much for joining us.